And a Houthi military spokesman in Yemen has confirmed to Al Jazeera that their fighters have hijacked a ship owned by an Israeli businessman in the southern Red Sea. At least 22 people were on board the Galaxy Leader, which was on its way from Turkey to India. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu condemned what he described as an Iranian attack. Now, the Galaxy Leader is sailing under the flag of the Bahamas. Ship tracking agencies showed it traveling in the Red Sea on Saturday, but they haven't received any location signals since the ship passed southern Saudi Arabia. Uh, the Houthis are threatening to take further military action in response to Israel's war on Gaza. John Holman has been monitoring U.S. reaction to uh, that in Washington, D.C. The United States National Security Council, which advises uh, the White it's the top body advising the White House and the president on security, has said that this is a flagrant violation of international law. It's demanding the release of the ship, the release of the crew, uh, and it's saying that it's going to take the appropriate next step with the U.S.'s allies and with its United Nations uh, partners. U.S. officials uh, have also, other media outlets have been saying, have confirmed to them uh, that uh, the fighters actually rappelled down from a helicopter to take over this cargo ship. The U.S. has been beefing up its presence uh, in the area. Uh, it says to try and prevent escalation uh, of uh, the fighting and of the violence in, uh, since October and more countries becoming involved. Uh, and it's also said that it's doing that to assist in Israel's security. And there's been two U.S. aircraft carriers that have been deployed to the Middle Eastern area with the accompanying warships that go with them. And in two separate incidents over the last month, they say that they've intercepted missiles or drones that have been coming, they say, from Yemen, heading either towards Israel or heading towards American vessels. And they've managed to uh, down them, but they obviously didn't manage to deal with this situation. Joining me now to discuss this is Ibrahim Freyhat, Associate Professor of Conflict Resolution at the Doha Institute for Graduate Studies. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much of a problem is this for the Israelis when they are now seeing that either Israeli-owned boats or other interests can be directly targeted outside of Israel? Well, I think it's quite serious. I would say probably 7 out of 10, mm. uh, because this represents to me is the first step in the expansion of the war to the region. And this is something that Israel and the United States have been seriously trying to prevent because, one, they don't want to expand uh, with uh, fight other wars while they are fighting in Gaza. And the other thing is that the U.S. global strategy is not the Middle East at the moment. It's about China and uh, Russia and Ukraine. So the United States does not really want to be pulled into this. But we are seeing the dynamics of the conflict are pushing in that direction. And actually, that this is step is coming of the Houthis uh, taking the ship in, in the Mandeb Strait. This is like after 45 days of the war. Uh, this was expected actually much earlier because the uh, what's called the axis of resistance are closely connected and they, w they function as one uh, unit between... You're the talking about and the, the various regional groups that have links to uh, Iran, whether it's the Houthis, Hezbollah, Hamas also, whether it's political, operational, financial. That's exactly. You mean, right? That's yeah. the axis of resistance groups in the region, Houthis, Hezbollah, Hamas, Hajj al-Shaabi uh, in Iraq as well. And yes, they have uh, links to Iran, as uh, strong links. But again, Iran keeps uh, saying that they also have their operational and decisions and their own decisions of uh, where to go. And the threats have been actually from day one that these groups would intervene in order to support Hamas. And we saw Hezbollah actually the following day on October 8th. October 8th, Hezbollah was giving signs and started yeah. to, go, you know, to do these kind of things. But now but this, the is, this is a pretty significant escalation from the Houthis. You're right. The threats were there from day one. And then from the Houthis specifically, they fired um, ballistic missiles exactly. at Israel, which were intercepted, and now they've seized this tanker or this, this ship. What are the options for Israel here? Well, Israel doesn't have many options here, actually. It's Israel's only option is just uh, looking at things of the only way that they do it, which is keep threatening and by force and trying to, by force, to achieve everything. And this doesn't work, because this is going to 
uh, threats and escalation is going to lead to escalation as well. And this is what's happening. Uh, this is not the first time uh, of the Houthis intervention in, in this war. Uh, we saw that they fired uh, ballistic missiles mm -hmm. from and, uh, and drones from, from Yemen. Uh, so this is actually the second stage of the escalation. Yeah, so we the missile, seeing... once it's, in, it's intercepted, problem solved uh, from the Israeli perspective. Yeah. The ship, on the other hand, they are holding that ship. There are people on that ship. Uh, the ship is connected to uh, Israeli business interests. Th that situation is going to be ongoing as of now. And this is, uh, let's remember, this is going through the Mandeb Strait. This is like the, the, the strait that connects all of Europe to yep. South Asia. This is a very, very vital... Commercial um, waterway. Exactly. Yeah. So this is this is very serious, like what's happening. And the Houthis have, they can disrupt the entire area. They're in control of the Mandeb Strait. They're a non-state actor. They're militias. They've been fighting a war for seven years now with Saudi Arabia. So just a few additional bombs of bombing them is not mm. going to make a big difference. Mm. They've been living this for seven years. So even the United States, the interesting thing, we haven't seen any response from the United States to the escalation that the Houthis took in the Mandeb Strait, which usually something this is the United States would rush into making threats as well. But again, the U.S. keeps pushing that does not want to uh, be pulled into this. But the way it's managing this war, uh, actually the, dynamic of, the dynamics of it is pulling necessarily the United States mm. into this war. Because today we're seeing... Uh, uh, kidnapping ships in the Mandeb Strait. Tomorrow, we're going to see something else, and we're going to expect something from probably Hajj al-Shaabi in Iraq and, and Hezbollah, you know, it's on the... So you foresee further escalations. Uh, the, of course. The, the U.S. has already made a major, major move here, and it was several weeks ago when they sent two uh, naval uh, aircraft carriers yes. uh, to the region.